Welcome to Off the Page, the show where we talk with Colorado authors to get the story behind the story. I'm Stacy McKenzie, a librarian here at Mamie Dowd Eisenhower Public Library in Broomfield, and today I'm so thrilled to have author and fellow librarian Shelley Walchak with me. Hello, Shelley, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to have you. I've known you for a while, and so I was very excited to hear that you've written this book, 52 Rivers, A Woman's Fly Fishing Journey. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Oh, but before we talk about the book, tell me about your life as a librarian in the Denver area. In Denver? Well, um, I've actually been a librarian for my entire career. I started out as a business librarian back in the Detroit area. Uh, and then I was a school librarian for about 15 years before I came back to Colorado, which is where I went to college. And I started down in Durango at a university or college library, Fort Lewis College. And then I was uh, hired by the Colorado Library Consortium, uh, where I worked as a consultant for about four years and then went on to the Colorado State Library, where I was the senior consultant for public libraries. And after about a four-year stint there um, and a sidetrack on to a river, I decided that I needed to go into semi-retirement and write a book. I um, had done pretty much everything there is to do with a book, and, uh, but I had not written one. And this was my opportunity to do that. And so we now know librarians don't just read books and hand them out, we write them too. We most certainly do. <laughs> Your book is about fly fishing. And that's not a book that we hear about, well, anybody writing very often, but especially librarians. When did you develop a passion for fly fishing? It started uh, in 2009. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because some people, when they hear, that I've only been fly fishing for six years. They go, and you wrote a book about it? Um, but I went on a vacation with my husband up on the Bighorn River in Montana. Mm -hmm. And we had three days in a row, consecutive days, on the river. And I came away realizing that this was something that I could do for the rest of my life. And it was an immediate falling in love um, with the sport and I from that point on I decided that there had to be a way that I could really become intimately involved with the sport with the and I don't really even think of it as a sport although it is to a certain extent um, but it really is is much more about the entire experience of being on a river um, because you know fish do live in nice places. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, luckily. <laughs> they do. How nice. But you're a woman. <laughs> and we usually when we think of fishing, we do think of the men maybe trying to get away from some women to go fishing. Now, the subtitle of the book is A Woman's Fly Fishing Journey. Are there a lot of women doing this? You know, women are very welcomed into this world of fly fishing. Um, the, you're absolutely right. It is mostly a um, male-dominated occupation or, um, or pastime, I guess I should say. Um, and in fact, after I decided that um, I was going to do this year-long journey and write a book about it, I went to the Denver Fly Fishing Show, which comes every January uh, of each year. And I walked in and I didn't know a single person there. My husband was out of town and I had to make some connections. And I ended up going to a booth of um, the International Federation of Fly Fishers. And the gentleman who was there, a guy named Don Gibbs, said, I know exactly the people who you need to talk to. And they sent me over to my good fr now good friends, Pat and Carol Oglesby. Mm -hmm. And from there, they started to uh, introduce me to the world of fly fishing and all the different people that they, they, they were very, very connected. Uh -huh. And one of, the, one of the groups that I got connected with as a result of them was a group called the High Plains Drifters. Uh -huh. And they meet kind of in the, in the Littleton area um, of Denver. And uh, talking about just women, uh, or just men and, and, and um, the minority of women, I walked into the club that night and I was one woman with about a hundred men. Yes. 
and they embraced me like I was their daughter, although I was the same age as a lot of them, <laughs> um, and made me feel really, really at home. And I think that's what's so unique about this um, an incredible sport is that the people are just it's kind of like librarians, you know. We love our friends because they're well educated, they're kind, they are involved with community, and I think the same thing about fly fishers. That's fascinating. You fell into the, you stumbled upon the right sport for you, and then you fell in with the right people, and now we have this fabulous book. So we know the book is about fly fishing, but what is the book about on a little deeper level, and how do you fit in? So as a librarian, I took a good year to research and organize how I was going to pursue um, my research. Mm -hmm. And I uh, decided that um, I, I should go back a little bit because the real inspiration for the book mm -hmm. uh, was when I was actually doing some strategic planning mm -hmm. and board training uh, down in Woodland Park at their library. And there was a beautiful book that was set out on the table that said 365 days on Pikes Peak, and it was by the Pikes Peak guy. And he had spent literally every day for a year just filming that beautiful mountain. Mm -hmm. And the book was so gorgeous, I picked it up and uh, bought it for my husband for his birthday. And I started to think, oh, how amazing would that be to be able to focus for a whole year on one project? Mm -hmm. and. I started thinking, and I, well, I can't do 365 rivers, and all of a sudden it dawned on me, but I could do 52. I could do a river a week, uh -huh. and as I started planning it, I realized that I would have to keep myself somewhat within a section of the country, uh -huh. and so I picked, of course, the most beautiful part of the country, in my opinion, the seven Rocky Mountain states, and, I agree. and then <laughs> I did, um, I, I spent about, oh, maybe half my time on Colorado rivers, a little bit less, and then the remainder were in uh, Wyoming and Montana and Idaho mm -hmm. and New Mexico and Arizona and Utah. And you found 52 rivers oh, in those I areas? Oh, I barely scratched the surface. Yeah. And I actually fished a lot more than 52, uh -huh. um, but uh, I kept to my original theme and, and kept it at, at 52 rivers in a week. It in sounds a, in a overwhelming, year. but to, to hear that, oh, you barely scratched the surface, that's so fascinating. Yeah. Now, Shelley, a, a burning question I have. Did the fish always cooperate? The fish did cooperate. <laughs> um, I uh, definitely had my share of rivers where I never caught a fish, mm -hmm. um, but I also had my share of rivers where um, I couldn't stop catching fish. Uh -huh. In fact, one of the examples was uh, up at uh, the Yampa River in Steamboat Springs. Uh -huh. And it was late April and we'd gotten a, uh, a late spring, or an early spring, I should say, late winter snowstorm. Uh -huh. And I went to the fly shop and the guide who I was scheduled to go out with said to me, well, do you want to keep things kind of simple? or uh, are you more adventurous or adventuresome? I said, oh, adventuresome for sure. Mm -hmm. And so we drove out to the Sarvis Creek area, which is kind of below the dam there, and got in a snowmobile with our gear, mm -hmm. and we snowmobiled in, and it was one of those magical days where there was no wind at all, and the snow was coming uh, straight down in great big um, flakes, and it did that throughout the entire day. And we started catching fish that were 20 inches and bigger, which you know, can be uh, a fish of a lifetime for some people. And it just went on and on and on for the entire day. Um, but that, that's an example of one of the really good days. There are also many, many times that I went out um, and never caught a fish. But uh, as a fly fisher, you if you really, really fall in love with the sport, it, it really is not about the fish. It's about something much bigger. In fact, I have a quote that I could read to you um, that that's, I think says it better than anything else. Oh, yes, please um, do. This is by a woman named Joan Wolfe, who is kind of um, 
one of the biggest names in fly fishing. She, uh, she's still alive. And a woman. And a woman. Excellent. And there are lots of wo women in the fly fishing world. Um, and I just loved this that uh, because it, it really, um, as I got out into the, into the uh, rivers and into the woods, I felt very much the same way that she did. And what she says here, this is in her essay in a book called Sacred Trusts. The woods and waters of the outdoors became my church, a place where I could examine my thoughts and feel I was connected to all living things. This feeling is especially strong when, with rod in hand, I am wading a river for trout or salmon where everything makes sense, where there is nothing but truth. There will be no disenchantment with this church. So I think that that's really beautiful. That speaks to you. That quote really works it does. for you. It what does. You um, it sounds fabulous. And uh, I know that you have one other passion, and that is libraries and librarianship. Shelley, how did being a librarian help you to tell this story? Oh, like I said earlier, I, um, I had done pretty much everything with books. I had referred them. I had cataloged them. I had shelved them. So I felt pretty intimately involved with books and also knew a fair amount about the publishing world. And so um, I feel as if a book was a part of me, and so it, wasn't, it didn't really feel like a stretch. People oftentimes will say, they'll pick up my book and they'll go, oh my gosh, what does it feel like to have published your own book? Uh -huh. And um, I'm, I'm certainly proud of my accomplishment, but I feel as if it was just a natural extension of my life as a librarian. And it was just such a blast to do, um, not only the research end of it, but, but even the writing end of it was just um, so enjoyable to me that um, I, I would do it again in a flash. It was, it was just a natural process for you, sort of a next step. I think a lot of librarians feel that way. We're around them all the time. And, and something about a story or something speaks to us, so out comes a book out of some of us. Yeah. As you're writing the book and putting it together, and maybe even as you were out there doing your fishing, did you have a particular audience in mind, or, or who would you really like to appeal to with this book? My mother was, um, became ill at age 62. And I remember, she didn't pass away until she was 70, but I remember her saying to me, oh, there's so many things I wish I had done, and I'm now not capable of doing them. Mm -hmm. And as I approached 62, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, I don't want to leave this earth saying that same thing. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say that I followed my passion um, whether it meant leaving a good job or leaving my family behind for a period of time. Uh, I want to be able to, to do, I want to be able to say, I've put the icing on my cake. Yes. So uh, that's, that's what I had to do. Okay. And that's who you're speaking to. I am speaking to people who have who are saying that same thing to themselves, mm -hmm. and I'm encouraging them to follow their dreams and follow their passions. And so that can be male or female. Um, I, I guess I would say particularly female, mm -hmm. but I think the book has enough um, information about fishing mm -hmm. and enough passion and enough photographs uh -huh. that it would have interest to a much wider audience than just women. And I do want to mention the photograph. She, you brought that up. Uh, the photos in there are fantastic and amazing, and your website has some beautiful images on it also. Thank did you. you take all of the pictures? I did. Oh, uh, did. This was an undiscovered, uh, I can't say it was an undiscovered passion because I had done a lot of photography classes in the past, but never really felt as if I could take pictures the way I did that year. Oh. And I think part of it, I was reading a, an article by an author recently and he was saying it was a very difficult time for him and his writing became so passionate and so good as a result of this experience that he had and in some ways I feel that 
having been out on the river and being so engrossed with that whole experience allowed a certain creative juice to come to the surface and uh, help me with my photographs. How wonderful, because that helps to make the book, doesn't it? I think so. I mean, in fact, it's interesting because if you, if you pick up the book and look at it, people will often sometimes say, oh my gosh, it's all photographs. And I go, no, no, it's half photographs uh -huh. and half writing. Uh -huh. So. Oh, it's wonderful. It really just adds a level to the book that maybe if you're not into fly fishing, but you're into the Rocky Mountains, you might be interested in that too. Exactly. Fabulous. So 52 rivers, a year of fly fishing, a river a week, all this planning, all this research. Now that the book's done, your 52 weeks are over, do you feel any different about fly fishing than you did when you started the project? I think I... I love fly fishing even more uh, as a result of it. I, uh, I could have kept right on going. Mm -hmm. It was really the, my real inspiration for stopping my year on the road was to write the book. And then at, at, on the day that I sent my file off to the printer, mm -hmm. I got a phone call uh, from a wonderful library in Southwest Colorado uh -huh. called Pine River Library asking me if I was done with my 52 thing and asking me if I would come down and be the director of their library. So I guess I'm kind of straying from your question but I, um, I, would, like, I would like to do another project like this. Mm -hmm. um, having self-published um, you need to be able to have a certain amount of cash uh -huh. up front so it's kind of nice to be able to go back uh -huh. and, and, and work for a while. Uh -huh. uh, but teasingly, I spoke in front of um, my local fly fishing group the other night. And when I was introduced, um, kind of tongue in cheek, the president of the club said, so the next project is uh, 12 countries and fly fishing. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, that's a really good idea. So what, do a different country a month, oh. and I, I shouldn't really be putting this out there because once I put it out there, then I'm going to really get, take myself <laughs> seriously yes, and start yes, doing yes. this. But um, I would love to do another project. Mm -hmm. I would love. I I still love the sport as much as ever. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've given myself a little bit more leeway mm -hmm. because, of course, when you speak to the guides on the river, mm -hmm. they they talk about people who who they. Um, guide throughout the years and they come back for a week once a year and they say oh yeah I've been fishing for 30 years mm -hmm. but fishing for 30 years times three days is a lot different than going out for a whole year yes. and I did not fish every day but I did fish over 200 days and I feel as if I've come away giving myself a little bit more leeway mm -hmm. to go onto a river and maybe only fish for three or four hours and then take out my camera and start shooting or just take a hike and look for wildlife and um, allow myself to be all encompassed by, by the whole scene. Well, I say you do put it out there and you do get serious about it and you just do it because it just sounds too fascinating and inspiring. Even if someone's not into fly fishing, the story of what you're doing, putting it together, the follow through, it's, it's marvelous. Well, Shelly, something really exciting is that you had some sponsors to help you along the way with this project. Tell me about them. Uh, initially, I went to a few different organizations and told them what I was going to do and, and asked them for some support and help. But I didn't really have any clout at that point. I could say, I've been a librarian for 30 years and I love books, but I had not written a book before. and. I'm not sure that they thought I was really going to finish the project. And so my two sponsors actually happened toward the um, summer of the year that I was on the road. And I was over in Glenwood Springs and I had gone to a outdoor fair. Mm -hmm. And there was a fly fishing booth there. And the gentleman said, I, I started talking about what I was doing after we had talked about the weather or a few other things. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I heard about you. I was over in Breckenridge last week and 
Somebody was telling me that this woman was going around and fishing a river a week for a year. And so I bought a few flies from him. Mm -hmm. And then about two days later, I got an email from him saying, I would like to sponsor you for the rest of the year. This is Brothers Flies okay. um, for the rest of the year. And so he bought the rest of my flies for the, for the second half of my whole journey. How fabulous. And the other um, uh, sponsor that I had was um, Damsel um, Fly, or it wasn't Damsel Flies, Damsel um, Clothing. And she's out of the Arizona area, and she makes women's fly fishing shirts and other things okay. as well. And so she sent me some clothing, and I was so appreciative of her supporting my um, my whole journey that I listed her as a as a um, supporter as well. Okay. But the biggest supporter I had uh -huh. was my father, and my father um, passed away. Uh, in February, I started my trip in 2013, mm -hmm. and he passed away in February of 2012. Mm -hmm. And he would have loved to have seen this um, creation, but he was the one who actually helped uh, finance a great deal of it. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, as you, as you talk about uh, where I went and how I did it, I got a guide almost every week. Um, that um, I was on a different river so that I could kind of get the lay of the land, find out what hatches were happen happening, what was the local favorite fly, um, where I should wade, where I shouldn't wade. Um, and of, of, except, of course, in the winter, um, I would usually try to float with them. So I would get a really, really good um, perspective on the river, um, at, at least in the area where I was going to be fishing. And guides are not inexpensive. Right. So They know a lot. Yes. Yes. So my father was, um, was my biggest sponsor. And I do need to mention my husband because he was totally supportive of me. And he did meet up with me, oh, maybe a dozen times um, throughout the year, but was totally supportive and um, was really one of my um, biggest um, encouragers. Thank goodness he was supportive. Yes. That could have been tough. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> a fly fishing widower, I guess they would say. Yeah, exactly. that, that kind of a joke. In fact, it was interesting. The Thanksgiving before I left, we ended up making this mad dash to Minnesota uh -huh. where I picked up the little trailer. It's a little 13 foot trailer that I lived in all year. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, it, it became home. I mean, I ended up. Uh, figuring out that I could be very happy with a very minimal amount of space for a whole year. So we did this mad dash to Minnesota, picked up the little scamp, um, drove it back, and then I had my last two weeks at the State Library and family out for Christmas and started on January 4th. Oh, what so. an adventure. Fabulous. Shelly, as we finish up, I want to ask you, um, did anybody else help you with finishing up the book, getting it out there? So I ended up hiring, I went to the Rocky Mountain School of Art and Design, mm -hmm. and um, I had actually uh, met Gustavo at a, um, it was a social uh, at the company that I had hired to do my website. Uh -huh. And I worked with a, a woman named Shelley Drum uh, who helped me design my website. And we were having a social at their location on a Friday night, and I was getting ready to uh, take off and, and do the project and I hadn't really thought about a book designer at that particular point and was introduced to Gustavo Esquinca and he was just finishing up with school and so we kind of went back and forth over the first um, eight nine months that I was on the road and started talking about design and what it was I was looking for and uh, of course, he being of a completely different generation uh -huh. than I, I really loved his input and his creativity, and um, I loved the way the book turned out on a design level. It really is an adventure, and now that the book's out, you're going to be selling it, and, and people are going to be really seeing what you did for that year. Um, now it's it's really a big adventure. Maybe the adventure's just starting, too. Maybe. <laughs> Shelly, thank you so much for being on the show today. I appreciate it. It was wonderful to have a fellow libra librarian on the show and also to have this wonderful book. It was great to be with you, Stacy. You bet. Thanks.
Check your local library for the book that we talked about on today's show, 52 Rivers by Shelley Walchek. And join us for more next time on Off the Page.